Uh, today's video is going to be uh, partially about and inspired by a, a toy called the Useless Box, or sometimes called the Useless Machine, which is attributed to Marvin Minsky as a kind of a philosophical joke. The idea is that you push the switch and instantly a little hand pops up and turns it back off. I think back in the 70s or 60s or so, there was a toy called uh, the uh, Monster in a Box. And there was a version of that that actually was a coin bank. You put, the, you put a coin here and a hand reaches out and snatches it away. But I think in its purest form, the useless box is a, is a great way to talk about it. If you open the thing up, this is something I just purchased off of eBay. You'll find essentially a little motor drive mechanism inside. And uh, there's a, a, a toggle switch and it has two positions. In one position, it causes the motor to drive in this direction towards the switch, and when the switch is still the other direction, it causes the motor to drive back in the other direction, except that it can only drive back so far for it hits an interrupter switch here, which if I go ahead and, um, I guess I can't, if I hold it down while I press the switch, it can actually cause it to stop when it's in the up position. Now if I release it, it'll complete its cycle and go all the way back down. So. There's no electronics involved, just, just some very clever uses of, um, of a double pull, double throw switch and a little micro switch. So this is the circuit inspired by the useless box. Essentially it's inspired by something a friend of mine remembers me making when I was in high school. Uh, some kind of circuit. I think I built it out of a Radio Shack code practice oscillator, which I think you could buy for about a about dollar. And it was the basis of many of my little wacky circuits. Um, but he remembers me building a box where when you threw a switch or something on it, it began making a tone that began increasing in frequency, getting higher and higher and higher. But there was no way to turn it off. Um, and of course, that was the joke of the whole thing. So this is the this is the modern day version I've uh, I've revisited that circuit, and probably easiest to demo what it does. You push the button, and it begins throbbing. Now, preferably, it's going to have some kind of warning on it. Says, "Do not press the button to inspire the curious to do exactly that." After a few cycles of pulsing the light, it begins making this this tone which to all intents and purposes seems like it's getting higher and higher in pitch. The tone is actually something called a shepherd tone, which is invented by a fellow named Roger Shepherd. Um, it uses a, a superposition of sine waves that are separated by octaves. So while it, to the ear, it sounds like it's increasing in pitch. It's really just cycling around and around as one Pitch goes up, another pitch begins an octave lower and begins over again. And the joke is that once you've turned it on, nothing you can seem to do can turn it back off again. But there is a trick. Um, if you press and hold the button until the button illuminates again, then that'll cause the entire thing to power down. So this is the device that I, that I set out to build for my friend. And here's the circuit that makes it all work. Um, the tones generated by this little module I bought off of uh, eBay called the DF Player Mini essentially takes a micro SD card that contains one or more um, MP3 audio files, um, as many as you can fit on the card. In this case, I just have the single tone on there. I have an ATtiny85 that I'm programming using a special adaptation of the Arduino IDE. There's an additional package you can install that lets you program these little chips. It costs about a dollar, so it's easy to put in a throwaway circuit. Then one of the key components is this device here, which is the MIC9409, which is something called a high side load switch. It's made by Microl or Micro, I think is now owned by Microchip. Essentially, it's it's just a switch, electronic switch, where when the enable input is is taken high relative to the battery that it switches on a MOSFET over here that allows power to flow through to some kind of a load over here. If you take this low again, it shuts off the power. And the ideal advantage is that it doesn't really consume any power at all, maybe microamperes, when this, when this enable line is low. 
So here's how I put that together with um, the rest of the components. The um, pin 6 is the enable input, pin 4 is the power input, and pin 1 is the power output, so it drives the mini player on the ATtiny85 right here. Uh, this, this input, the enable input, is held low through this 1K, 1 meg combination right here, so that it doesn't, if it doesn't float high and switch it on randomly. I'm not sure this is necessary, but just as just general design, I, I wanted to follow through with it. I think this device may actually contain an internal resistor that pulls it down. So the way that it works is that when you press switch 1 here, it sources current through the 100K resistor, but also to D1 diode, and it actually pulls this, this signal high, thus turning on the switch and powering up the ATtiny. At that point, if you were to release it, the thing would normally turn back off, except that the ATtiny, the first thing it does when it's powered up, is it turns this, this pin here, which is programmed to be an output pin, high, which pulls this circuit high through the 1K resistor, which even after you've released this button, the 1K resistor is going to hold this circuit high, even, even, addition, even though there's 100K resistor is trying to pull it low again. That's going to hold the circuit on for as long as the ATtiny wants to keep things operating. So then it goes through its cycle and begins, it begins um, playing the tone and so forth. Now the other bit of trickery is that in addition to that, because of the diode here, it isolates the circuit from this would normally kind of pull it high um, and would never be able to go low again. But with the diode, this is actually can fall low again when the switch is off. And you can read that signal here at pin 3, an additional input on the ATtiny. So this gives you a way to signal the microprocessor with a, with a binary input even while it's got this power switch held in the on position. So through a little bit of programming, I've, I've set it up to you have to hold this switch down for several seconds um, before it'll actually tr uh, trigger the power down sequence that'll actually bring pin two, a pin two a low again and there, thereby switch the circuit off. And it uses the LED to provide a way of, of feedback for that when it's not busy showing the little pulsing um, signal on it. Um, now I built this all just on a breadboard. I'm working on a circuit card, put it in right now. As I said, the DF Player Mini is something you can get off of eBay for about three or four dollars. The ATtiny85 could really be any kind of microprocessor, but these are cheap. They're about a buck and I use them for all kinds of things. This is the Micrel the Micrel high side switch here. It's the only tedious part of the circuit. It comes in this tiny little SC70 package, which is very hard to solder. I had to kind of jury rig it to even fit it onto this breakout board. Um, this is just a connector for the battery. There's an alternative to the Micro part, which I'm going to try next, which is a part made by TI, which comes in what's called an SOT 23-6 um, dash, dash package, which is about twice the size of the SC70, which should be a, a bit easier to solder. Um, at some point, I'm going to have a write-up on my page, Wayne's Tinkering page, um, which hopefully will be a link at this point on the screen showing you where to go to it. That'll describe this in more detail, and I'm working on a circuit board. You'll be able to fab via OSH Park if you want to build one of these. Uh, the nice thing about the circuit is, in addition to being a very practical joke when used like this, it has a lot of other applications for it. Uh, one in particular is I, I have a habit of leaving my soldering iron turned off, forgetting to turn it off. Um, a circuit like this, I'm thinking I'll build one with a relay output switch, so when I turn it on, it'll power itself up and switch on the relay there by turning on the, on the soldering iron. If I forget to turn the soldering iron off, in about an hour or so, this AT Tiny will count down and either beep at me to alert me I need to turn this, the soldering iron off, or maybe just even auto-power it down. Or just as the circuit exists right here, it would be a great little toy for a child. You could, you could put hundreds of different MP3 files on this SD micro SD card. So you can make a, a talking toy where the child has a switch maybe in, the, in a stuffed animal's hand that they squeeze and it powers up the circuit. It would randomly pick one of the MP3 files and, and it could sing a song or read a story or, or do something like that. The total parts count for this is really less than $10.00. Um, the tricky part of it is going to have to be a battery. I'm probably going to use three, um, three AAA batteries in the final design. I don't want to waste a, I don't want to have to put in a charging circuit for a LiPo Poly battery. 
So just using regular cells to make this thing easier to to to, to, um, uh, to replace and repair. And probably many other applications, a portable instrument where you have to take it out into the field and you don't want it to run down the battery, so you have a power-up circuit, you switch it on, and after maybe 10 minutes, it'll turn itself back off if you haven't powered it off. In that case, you'd probably program it to be a, or a short pulse, initial press would, would turn it on. A long press of maybe a second or so would then trigger the power-off sequence, and that's fairly straightforward to program. As I said, once I... Once I get this finished, I'll have more details on my on my webpage, Wayne's Tinkering page, um, and I'll describe the circuit in more detail and describe the software and give you a couple other examples of the things you can build with this.